Welcome, welcome to another piano lesson with Warren. My name is Warren McPherson. How are you doing this week? Hey, if you're new to the channel and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet and the notification bell and the like button and leave a comment down below, then you're doing yourself a disservice. We have a lot of fun over here, but most importantly, we learn a lot about gospel music, gospel piano, and today is going to be no different. We're going to learn how to harmonize melody. Yep, that's the thing. For a lot of beginners and intermediates, we could play chords, right? But when time comes to put that melody in the right hand, it's kind of tricky. How do I keep that melody going and still sort of harmonizing that melody while keeping the chords in the left hand? So I'm gonna give you some practical tips and tricks that you can work on today to start harmonizing that melody in the right hand, all right? So don't go anywhere, stay tuned. We're gonna dive into that. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about now harmonizing that melody in the right hand. First thing you need to do, so this is tip number one, you have to know the chords of the song. You can't go try to harmonize a song that you don't know the chords. So you have to know the chord structure. The song I'm gonna use for demonstration today is Amazing Grace. Everybody knows that song. It's an easy song. You're already familiar with the melody for most of you. So that's why I'm using that as a demonstration. So let's take a look. Chords. In grace. To the four. How sweet the sound. All right, back to the one. To the six. That saved. Oh, wretch. To the two. The dominant two. Like me. To the five seven, I want back to the one was lost, but now to the four, I'm found back to the one to the six was blind to the five, but now I see to the four that nice cadence so that's the basic structure of amazing grace if you could do that with the chords you could play amazing grace but what if you don't want to have to sing the melody what if you just want to sit and play that melody here comes now tip number two so if tip number one was you have to know the chords of the song tip number two is you have to know the melody i always say it's good to know the melody here mentally but then you also have to know the melody here so we're going to pick out the melody for Amazing Grace. Right? Right? <laughs> Even I messing up the melody, you see that? But anyway, to get the gist, right? Just be able to pick out that melody. Get comfortable doing that with all your songs. Picking out that melody. You can embellish the melody if you want. Amazing. You know, you can embellish the melody, but be able to play that melody. It's tip number three. We're gonna put the melody and the chords together so we get comfortable to see all these two things work together, so. Ah. Right? To the A. Ah. Ooh, embellishments. Oh, we 
not going to jump down that rabbit hole just yet. So you get the idea. First, I make sure I learn that chord so I understand the chord structure, the chord changes, when the notes are moving. Then we make, we pick out that melody just by the right hand so we make sure we know the notes of the melody. We got the rhythm down, fingering down. Then we put them together so we can see how everything match, right? Sounds good. Well, the right hand sounds a bit thin because we only have a single melodic line going. So this is where now the lesson comes in. I'm going to show you how you can effectively harmonize that right hand, but also this technique you can use for any song, right? First thing you need to know about harmonizing melody is that, one, we try to stick to the diatonic chords of the key we're in. Wow, that was a mouthful. What am I talking about? Diatonic chords, blah, 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 all of that. Okay. We're in the key of C in this example, right? So the diatonic chords, C, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished. Those are the chords of C. And the melody pretty much stays within those notes of the chords. So we make sure that our harmonized notes also stay within the key. That's tip number one when we get to the harmonization section. Tip number two is we try to harmonize the melody using notes of the chord we're on. So whatever notes you're using in that right hand to harmonize the melody, it should match one of the chord tones. So if I'm playing a C major in this left hand and I'm harmonizing, I wanna make sure that the other note I'm using to harmonize matches one of these notes. So in this case, I can harmonize it with that G because the G, both it's a diatonic tone, but it's also a chordal tone. It comes from the C chord. That's tip number two. Tip number three, and this is one of the big tips. This is one of the secret takeaways for playing chords with melody. Harmonize the melody in intervals of fourths, or intervals of thirds, fourths, and interval of a sixth. If you don't remember anything else in this video, <laughs> remember these three things. Melodies are harmonized in intervals of thirds, fourths, and sixth. You might say, Warren, what about fifth? Occasionally, and by occasionally, I mean a very low percentage of the time, you may throw a fifth in there, but 99% of the time, that beautiful harmonious sound that you're gonna be hearing and getting comes from harmonizing that melody in thirds, fourths, and fifths. These are intervals, so you probably need to go back Brush up on your intervals if you're not familiar with these things. But in a nutshell, if we take the key of C again, the distance from this note to this note is called a second. From here to here, a third, one, two, three. From here to here, a fourth, one, two, three, four. From here to here, a fifth, one, two, three, four, five. From here to here, a sixth, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's just basically the distance of notes from one note to the other note within the key, right? So in the key of C, the distance from here to here is a sixth. So when we say the, the intervals between the melody and the harmonized note needs to be a sixth apart or a third apart or a fourth apart, right? And the reason why we do it that way is because we always wanna make sure the melody is on the top. So that is what? Tip number four, tip number three. <laughs> I kind of lost track of my tips. The melody needs to be at the top at all times. So, so, so facilitate keeping the melody at the top. Sometimes we'll be playing thirds, sometimes we'll be playing sixth, sometimes we'll be playing fourth. Let's take an example now. I'm just gonna play the melody of Amazing Grace and I'm gonna harmonize it. So, interval of a fourth. Intervals of thirds. Still maintaining that thirds. Third, 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 fourth. Now, why I'm doing fourth here and not third? If I go, then that puts me on the A. I have to make sure that whatever chord I'm playing also has an A in it. So in this case, I could play the A minor. But if I wasn't playing the A minor and I played a G, 
I have to match that with a G chord. Not the A minor. But now we're talking about just sort of the elemental, elementary level of harmonizing chords with melody. Obviously, this rabbit hole can go very deep and the rules kind of start to shift. But at its core, this is where, this is the technique we use to harmonize melody. So let's do it again from the top. Thirds, fourths, thirds, thirds. Maintaining that third, right? Fourth, thirds, right? Thirds, then fourth. Now why I choose fourth here and not a third? Because my no, my chord is on my G. So I have to match that with diatonic uh, chordal tone. So then, then we go. We're back to the one. To the four. Thirds. Making sure that melody stays on the top. Right? I'm doing that because I'm on my four. Let's do that again now with the right hand, the left hand chord. So. Right? So you see how it works nicely? Just by doing thirds. Now remember I talk about you can also do a sixth. Now the reason why you can do a sixth also is because, check this out, if you didn't know this, an interval of a third, when inverted, becomes an interval of a sixth. How do you in uh, invert an interval? You either take the top note, the bottom note, put it at the top, or take the top note, put it at the bottom. And now you have an interval of a sixth. Right? See? One, two, three, four, five, six. So all of those spots that you see me using the thirds, I could flip them and use the sixth, and it will sound nice. Now the difference between the sixth and the third, it just, it gives, it space out the notes so you can hear the distinctive, the distinctive harmony or the individual notes clearer because it's an interval of a sixth. So when I do, I could have done, right? Instead of that, I just play that sixth. And why I could play that sixth? Because I'm still on that one chord. Or if I can just go back to the fourth. Now, instead of, I could do those in sixth. So then I could go. Or, or, right? See, you know, I have a fifth. Remember we talk about there are some circumstances where you might end up on a fifth. This is one case. Now it works nicely because C and G belongs to the C chord, C and G. But I don't like that heart, that fifth sound. It's not a very, it's too clean. That's why they call it a perfect fifth, you know? It's too clean. It doesn't really give that nice harmony sound that, you know, the, 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 when, a, when, when an interval of a sixth or interval of a third works together, it's more harmonious than, than fifths. fifths. Fifths are not, you know, that harmonious. So that's why I try to avoid them. So if we go again, 
6. Go to third, then third, then third. Now the reason I'm switching to third is because I don't have any room this way to create a sixth. If I was up here, I could do that, right? Uh, uh. <laughs> Just went to a little fancy ending there. But anyway, you see how you can easily begin to start to harmonize melodies, right? Now you have a method, a formula to run with. Let's recap. First thing you need to do, make sure you know the chords of the song. This is not a guessing game. You gotta know your chords, right? Tip number three, have to know that melody. Can't be guessing the melody either. You need to know the melody here. You need to know the melody here. You need to know the melody here, right? And then from there, we need to know our intervals. We need to be able to quickly identify a third, a fourth, and a sixth diatonically, right? Identify that based on the key we're in, which is why you need to know your major scales. And then from there, it's just a matter of practicing it till you get comfortable seeing those melody notes, seeing those intervallic notes, all right? I would love to hear what you think about this lesson, so leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you've been working on chords with melody effectively for that right hand. And as always, if you're new to the channel, you enjoy this lesson, please hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, the like button, and as you know, I said before, leave a comment. I want to hear from you. And lastly, if you want to take your gospel piano playing to even further heights, Piano Lesson with Warren is where you want to be. That's where I run a membership program for our gospel musicians. And right now we're running a special, a trial. You can get to check out all the courses, quizzes, um, ear training app, our practice path. We have a practice path for beginners that tells you exactly what you need to be working on every day and how you need to be working on it so you can take the guessing game out of learning the piano. So, seven day trial and you can access that for one dollar. One dollar, right? You pay a dollar and for seven days, you have unlimited access to everything in the program. So you can get to decide, is this something I want to continue with or not? All right, because we're not trying to sell you puss in a bag. <laughs> but Piano Lesson with Warren, we're currently helping hundreds of students over their great community of gospel musicians. I would highly recommend you check that out if you want to take your playing to the next level. A link to the trial is in the description. Click that, sign up, let me know what you think. All right, bye for now. Keep listening, keep singing, keep practicing, and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Have a blessed week. <laughs>